Welcome to the show! <laughs> this guy got a mistletoe belt on! Gosh, that is bad. The whole plane smells like weed. Those were the days. It's a joke, you idiot! Looked in the mirror, I'm like, <laughs> Good old innocent fun. Welcome back, everybody, to Troublemakers, a podcast where each week we bring on a guest and they tell crazy stories about their lives. I'm your host, Dylan Krasinski, coming to you from a beautiful day in Astoria, Queens. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, my indispensable number two, the man with the plan, everybody, Mr. Ray Zawadney. Hey, Dylan. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, as always. As and always. More importantly, thank you to everybody who is tuning in and listening to us, um, whether you're watching this full video episode on YouTube or you are one of our Spotify or Apple podcast listeners. If you are uh, fitting that description, please do us a huge favor. You could really help us out by leaving us a five-star rating and review um, it, wherever it allows you to do that. And please, five stars. Anything less. Five stars. Come on. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get crazy like I normally do. Just anything less than five stars. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Sorry. I have to say it every time. I have to leave a threat. Um, cause I, I, I got, it's speak. for you. It's for the people. It's for their best interest. They like you, it. You have their best interests in mind. They enjoy it. You, you know what people like last week? This what? is crazy. Um, on one of the clips you posted, I was wearing a drip lounge t-shirt. I noticed that. That I do wear frequently uh -huh. because it's one of the only shirts that fits my fat fucking ass. That yep. I, and it looks good on me. It's slimming. It's black. Um, but it is from a currently out of business vape shop that my friends used to own Whoa, and they saw okay. it on there and they were like drip lounge lives on damn yeah and that's a good shirt you like the fit it's a good shirt it's one it's of your few shirts that you like the it's fit like off. a gildan oh it's a gildan yeah but you know what it's you know, you know it's what not it's not quality as because it's not as good as it's not as good as a true classic true classic t-shirts baby that's our sponsor this week uh true classics i mean when you're a little thick like me and I, me and Ray are right now. I'm feeling a little thick, dude. My yeah. back's been bothering me still. It's hard for me to get to the gym. So I've just been uh, eating a lot of wings, uh, putting on a little weight. I get it. You don't have to tell me in the comments. I know. But you know what makes me feel like a fucking prince? A prince at the ball. A thin prince. A thin prince, dude, is putting on a, classic, a true classic tea. And you know what? It just accentuates the arms, makes my chest look, look buff, and my gut look like a six-pack. Does it? No, not a six pack, but it but like close. hides the Are gut. You, you have one on right now. You look. I do, dude. Now. I've been wearing them on the pods. You know, bad angle, but still doesn't look bad. I'm gonna wear one next week. Yeah, do it. I have them too. I've been hoarding them. Yeah, I wore one out on a date. Or one on a date. It's it's a shirt. It's a t shirt that it's you could wear good, on a fucking date. It's a good date t shirt. You know, it's crazy. I suggest the black. Yeah, twenty five percent off. Twenty five percent off. That's that is crazy. It is crazy. 25% off with the code TROUBLEMAKERS at checkout. Go check them out, guys. Uh, it's a great tea. Honestly, I was wearing them before they even sponsored the pod. So That's crazy. That is true, though. It is true. And you don't lie. I never lie. Me? Like Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. George Washington lies. He never told a lie. That was his thing. Oh, really? Yeah, never told a lie. Which Who's the liar? Uh, it's everybody else. All the other ones. <laughs> Biden. We have, we have two non-liars. Yeah. Just no, a, Trump's a truth teller, dude. A lion sack of shit. I um, I got a good story for you. You got a good story? I do. We I, uh, dude. Uh, I do. I want to hear the story first, or can I just can I just get some stuff? Would off you like to lament? Quick? Can Is I that just lament? No, no. It's being sad. Uh, grief. I would like to grieve for a second. Yeah. Because it's all I've been thinking about for the last two days. And I just can't, I don't know how many people on here are big sports fans, like myself, like you, but dude, yesterday, Monday Night Football, two days ago, if you're listening on Wednesday, uh, just, just the ultimate, as a Jets fan, nothing was more expected and unexpected than what happened yesterday at Meadowland Stadium, okay. MetLife Stadium. Okay, so what I, here's what I want to know. Yeah. My question for you about this yes. is you, you're obviously a good buddy. We talk about football all the time. Yeah. Uh, the guy that you watched the game with, Paul Daggs, uh, yes. a huge Jets fan. And all you two have talked about is being so excited to see Aaron Rodgers on this team. Literally, first drive. I don't even think he completed a pass. Did he did he? not. He, his career stats with the Jets are 0 for 1 or 0 for 2 for 0 yards. 
and he I, got I like I literally it's all I've been thinking about for like the last 18 hours I almost have to laugh now but it is the most depressing thing because when you're a Jets fan like a lot of people who are Lions fans or Browns fans or even you know what I can't say Steelers fans you guys have won a ton but as a Jets fan you live in misery all the time so, so that that was that was what my question was going to be when you just because yeah. you, you kind of said it you said like it was expected, yes. So when, when he first went down, was your first thought like, that's it, he's done for the season? I was so nervous when he took the field. I was like, not like, oh, I hope he plays good. I hope you know he throws a touchdown. I, I was just like, I hope that it, he just doesn't get hurt. Like just just let him let him be a jet for a little bit. You know, Did they. You, they might have kicked the shit out of the Bills last night if Dude, you would have played. That's that, and that's the worst part about it. I was talking to my buddy about it earlier, and every Jets fan will think like this, and a lot of people could disagree. But the 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 biggest what if about it is that it is a what if, and because like say he played five or six games and didn't really play that well, just was like a middle of the pack quarterback. Yeah, he wasn't at his at his old form from two years ago, and then kind of like wasn't great, and then got hurt. Then we would be like, okay, well, we weren't really going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, dude, he didn't him. even get five or six drives. No, no, he got five. He didn't get five plays. He got four plays, dude, and a, a fucking yeah, that freak whew. accident. I mean, get rid of the turf on these fields. I don't I, know how much that will affect things, but <laughs> I, dude, I, I, I want to blame everybody. I couldn't believe it. I could not. I couldn't believe it. I, my jaw dropped when he sat on the ground. Because here's the thing. If people don't, if you're not a Jets fan, you don't understand. It, it, I, the closest thing about it is being a Browns fan or being a Lions fan. But even I would them, say a Bills fan, uh, maybe. But the Bills, here's the thing: the Bills have been good recently. They also went to four Super Bowls in a row. Now losing four in a row is, is hell. Hell. But at least you got to the Super Bowl four sure. years in a row. The Jets, I haven't watched. 13 years since they made the playoffs. The best Jets football I've ever watched was Mark Sanchez when I was in college with that defense. And they, like, barely scraped by. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they barely scraped in, and it was so exciting. The last, like, seven years, uh, last year in particular, the Adam Gase years from two, uh, two to five years ago were some of the worst football. Set us back years and years. And it's just one of those things. Not only have they never been able to get a quarterback right since, like, Chad Pennington, Vinny Testaverde, Mark Sanchez. Like, those are our best quarterbacks Yeah, when you think about it that way. I feel like the Jets lost worse than the Steelers this past weekend. Of course they did, dude. Of course. One game versus an entire season. This is the, the worst part. I was even, like, when he came in, because here was what it was. Last year... We watch the Jets every single week, like, lose games 10 to 6, 10 to 3. And you had to watch this, like, unbelievable defense and this struggling offense where, like, Zach Wilson couldn't complete a five-yard pass. He couldn't sit in the pocket. He couldn't do any of these things. And then eight months ago, like eight months ago, we get unbelievable news that Aaron Rodgers is, wants to come to the Jets. He, the trade happens, and he comes to the Jets. Yeah. It, was, it was for eight months. It was pinch me. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Even if he has the worst, his worst career year, it would still be statistically the best quarterback to You've ever play for the Jets. had in a long time. Ever. Like, ever. And Zach Wilson, I still stand by it. He fucking sucks. I will say this. He didn't look bad last night. I, I, I watched the game. He didn't look bad. He didn't look good. A lot of the things that he did terribly last year where he would not sit in the pocket and yeah. he would run as soon as the pocket started to collapse, he wasn't doing that last night for the most part. There you, were times he did it. You know who he looked better than? <laughs> Josh Allen. Josh Allen looked like shit. Dude, that's another thing I said. If certain quarterbacks get big passes. They get a big pass. Like when Mark Sanchez threw four interceptions against the Patriots like nine years ago, 10, uh, 14 years ago. He sat the next game. They benched him. Yeah. Josh Allen threw three bad picks and had a butt fumble. Yeah. Uh, did you see that? Mark uh, Mark Sanchez tweeted out right after the fumble. I didn't see that. He goes, uh, Josh Allen fumbles the ball after running into his own player. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so funny, dude. I mean, that kind of that 
put the nail in the coffin of Mark Sanchez's I know. career. I know. I know. Which is nuts. I mean, I, I had a little ugh. bit. I had a little bit of disappointment on Sunday. Did you, dude? I got so fucking drunk, right? At the Steelers tailgate. Yeah, I started tailgating at like nine a.m. Um, only did two shots the whole day, which I'm proud of. Okay, but was doing so many beers. Oh. <laughs> So many white claws. <laughs> I was waiting for that. So I get I get so fucked up, and I don't even go into the game. We just go to my buddy my buddy Tom's house. Yeah, and we're sitting there, and the Steelers are getting their ass kicked the entire first half, and then it's you know twenty to nothing, and we got the ball with under two minutes left in our own like inside our own twenty, yeah, inside our own fifteen, and we were like, all right, dude, we're gonna jump in your pool in all of our gear if they score a touchdown here. Jumping our pool in all of our gear. So, obviously, they score a touchdown. We jump in the pool, and they don't fucking score again the rest of the game. So, it was like the worst of... You're just sitting there soaking wet for the rest yeah. of the game well, watching I changed. Them. Even, even worse, oh. I was wearing, like, no underwear and jeans. Oh, dude. Is there nothing... That might be the most uncomfortable thing, sitting in jeans with no underwear. And no socks. Oh. Something about jeans with no socks is disgusting. That's like too. a homeless specialty right there. Yeah. That's no <laughs> underwear, no socks. Drove back in today, get Nothing. into Queens, and I'm wondering why there's, tra like, I hit traffic every step of the way, but I'm wondering why there's traffic right when you get into Astoria, and speaking of the homeless special, it's like, it's like always a nice welcome to New yeah. York, a dude wearing the outfit you just talked about, <laughs> standing in the middle of, like, four-lane traffic. No socks, no underwear, it's a homeless special right there, that's yeah. the uniform. Uh, but just to wrap that with Aaron Rodgers, Sorry, it yeah. was no, no, it's just, you know what? And everybody's talking about blown season and, and nobody's probably more upset than he is. Like he, he seemed super motivated. I hope he comes back. I hope like, you know, he's doing okay mentally. I mean, he's got about $200 million to, you know, wipe his tears, wipe his tears with, but I was really looking forward to out it. Out for the fucking season is tough season. When you watch the replay, you could see it pop. It was gross. You can see it snap. I mean. As soon as he stood up and I was like, oh, he tweaked it a little bit. He was limping. And then he sat down and I was like, fuck, fuck. Yeah. But then, it, I mean, great game. Great game after that. It's just so unfortunate that with Aaron Rodgers playing well, the Jets after this weekend would be a Super Bowl favorite. They're looking good in the division for sure. For sure, dude. That defense isn't going to give up more than fucking 21 points a game. Yeah. Probably not. They I look mean, good. Bill's got a good offense. And the running game. The running game. Brees, Brees Hall. Hall, 90 yards and on because the and second because touch of the game. The Bills defense aren't slouches. Oh, they're good. They're probably like a top six defense, I would yeah. say. Yeah. But, hey, listen, you know, I just had to get that off my chest. Uh, anyone who's listening who is a Jet fan, a Jets fan, uh, just know you're not Better alone. Better luck next year. Every, no, I, I don't know, man. I, I still have a little faith in uh, in in... Zach Wilson. Here's the thing. If Aaron Rodgers like sits and stays in New York for the season and it almost is like a coach to like coach up Zach Wilson, I don't know what recovery is like for a guy like yeah. that. Does he like retire and just be like, yeah, I'll recover. And if, if I'm good by next summer, then Dude, I'll play. What if he never plays a down again? I, I think that's the most likely scenario. Oh, really? Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I think that's the most likely scenario. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry to see that happen. I I, I, I don't care for the Jets. It was actually pretty annoying hearing you and Paul talk about the Jets with hope in your eyes. It was annoying watching that stupid-ass hard knocks with his corny fucking smoke weed handshake. Oh, it's great, dude. But... You never want to see that. I, I, I was so excited for, like, me and my brother were talking about this because I stayed in Pittsburgh an extra day to watch Monday Night Football with my brother, and we were like, this sucks now. Like, it's... Like, also, the Jets have, like, seven primetime games. They're going to be the Broncos of last year. Yeah. I will say, though, last night's game was probably not only the most exciting Jets game I've seen, one of the most exciting NFL games I've seen in a long time. It was one of the most exciting, but it lacked a certain... Yeah, star factor. Luster because of him getting hurt. Dude, the, the air, you could feel the air sucked out of that stadium. Everybody bombed. he went down. Oh, yeah, even a win. You could yeah. feel everyone's just remembering. Uh, season's over, season's over. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe it won't be. They have such a good, they have such a good offense, such a good defense. If, if Zach Wilson can just, like, game manage almost and then hit a few 
Dude, and think of it this Big way. Big plays the every Chiefs, now and then. The Chiefs were able to win a Super Bowl last year with that Pat Mahomes guy at quarterback. And you everybody know? says Zach Wilson's basically like a yeah. younger version Get the of, fuck out of here. Pat Mahomes. I mean, him, Aaron Rodgers, Get Pat Mahomes. Out of here. Three three guys, very similar games, very similar games. Great improvising outside the pocket. So you know, you never know. You never know. But talk about a way to wake up on Tuesday hungover because I, as soon as Aaron Rodgers got hurt, I was like, bring on the booze, and I started drinking hard. Started I love drinking, drinking hard. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I started drinking. drinking and uh, I did not stop. I had like 13 tequilas and then got home and had some chips and then went to bed. Woke up at like 730 and I was like, I made a huge mistake. Got a pound water. I know. I haven't been. Do you ever, dude, do you ever, um, do you ever, uh, like your back hurts because it, like you're dehydrated and it's like your kidneys hurt? Mine's my legs, dude. Your legs hurt? My legs are in pain when I'm dehydrated like that. Dude, like I noticed calves. earlier today my back started hurting. And every now I was like, I got to drink some water. I think my kidneys are crying. Yeah. Hurts like right in the. I just love drinking so much. <laughs> and I drank old school because I've been off beer for so long yeah. over the over the weekend during that tailgate. I, I'm i going to be honest. Yes. I know I do a bit sometimes where I say I, I've drank 200 White Claws tonight. Yeah, yeah. No bullshit between White Claws and beers on Sunday, 30. 30? At least. Not, yeah. Between At two least. days? No, 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 no. One day. From 9 a.m. to oh, about... Oh, shit. I started drinking... I maybe had my first beer at 9.30 a.m., and I stopped drinking at about 7 p.m. God damn, Raymond. I think I drink 30 or more beers. <laughs> God damn, Raymond. I went the fuck in. Is that too much? It definitely is too much. <laughs> I felt so awful. You know what it is? I blacked too? out from from pretty much just Fuck. beer. I, I I'm getting to a point now. I'm thinking I'm getting too old to like. Uh, obviously not because I still do it. But like day drinking used to be one of my favorite things. I can't handle it, and it is my favorite thing. It, it might be my favorite thing to do. Yeah, a day drinking wedding, a day drinking uh, watching sports. But I I day drank last Saturday and um, watching the college games out at a bar, and there's just something different, like. When you drink during the day, you, like, gain weight. Like, I'm always heavy the next day after I day drink for some... Well, I don't know what you it have is. so much time to eat. As comp- uh, yeah, yeah. As mm-hmm. opposed to, like, drinking at night, you go to bed, you're light the next day because you're dehydrated. I, I black out drunk almost every time I day drink now. Really? Yeah, it's bad. When's the last time you blocked out? Sunday. Oh, buddy. Yeah. It, it, Natalie had to take me home to my mom's. Like we, we went an Uber back to my mom's from my buddy's. And I, I just, I got there, I fell asleep on a couch. I will say, your your lovely girlfriend, Natalie, did post a photo of you guys at the uh, tailgate. And uh, I will get the photo if we use this as a clip. But there is a, you can tell, I can tell in Ray's eyes when he's blacked out. I wasn't blacked out there. That was early. You don't know? No. All I saw was you had a water bottle in your hand. And I was like... Oh yeah, I can tell from those eyes he needs a water. That's no, th- but that's because we got to the first tailgate. Yeah, and I had like six beers quick, and I was just Love like, that. "All right, got to do a water, got to do mm-hmm. a snack," and that was when I was still being careful. And then I don't know, caught a lot of football though. Yeah, love catching. It's always football. good. Yeah. Dude, we caught a we threw a football around the other day. I was, was like fun. fucking psyched about it. I love it. It's I great. love football season. It's great. But yeah, dude, I'm I'm so excited uh, about the NFL. It was just such a good opening weekend, too. Do we want to? Do you want to do? I mean, we're 20 minutes in, but do you want to just do our other sponsor real yeah, quick? Yeah, let's 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 Jump get into to our it? other sponsor. Uh, Since we're talking about football anyway, that is Odds Are. Oh, baby, Odds Are. It is it is an app that is built with an algorithm designed to give you an edge over the odds makers. Uh, they give you value picks every single week. And just by being a Troublemakers listener. Yep. Troublemakers listener, you get two weeks free when you sign up with the code in our description. Uh, Go follow that code. Two weeks free to use the app. I've been using it. I love it. I think it's great, man. I uh, Our our lock of the week hit. Our lock of the week hit, which was Alabama, Texas. That was a pretty, I thought that was a great bet. It it hit handedly. It it hit handedly. Uh, On the weekend, I went seven for 10 on my picks. But didn't win any money because I parlayed everything. Like you, you got differently, stop with the you know parlay. what I mean? 
You're a new better. I know. You got to relax on the parlays. What what I what I, I rec- take a couple of straight bets, man. It's not as sexy, but you you win the fucking straight bet. I mean, I did take a straight bet, one straight bet, because uh, I went and watched the Iowa Iowa State game at a bar, and I just took the Iowa. I took the under, and that hit. But it, it was like a ten dollar bet to win nine dollars. So it wasn't very. But you got to bet. A, you bet fifty dollars to like. That stresses know. me out, dude. No, I like a ten dollar bet that'll pay out three hundred. Low risk, high reward. Yeah, everybody does, dude. What was your record last week? Last week I won. Here's the thing, my record was bad, but I ended up up money it's nice. because as the night went on, I was drunker, and I fucking was just betting more money that I don't have. Yeah, but um, but I went with, with the picks that we put out on the podcast. I Once went, again, two yeah. weeks in a row, I went one and two. I went one for two also with those picks. I got beat on that Saints, um, the Saints game because I took the... I, I took, took the Titans. The, yeah, you took the Titans. I took the Saints. And talk about a bad beat, and I get it, but yeah. the Saints driving down up by one with two minutes to go, and they're in their own red zone, and they kneel it instead of punching it in for a touchdown. I get it to go up by eight, and then they still have a chance to tie the game. You're trying to win, but it was just such a kick a field goal. Wait till a second left and then kick a field goal. You I know? also came on here and told everybody to bet all of their money. I right. know. And and in in solidarity, I lost a lot of money on the Steelers. Did you? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm very against betting my own team, but I will say my picks this week, do you want to get into them? Get to it. Do you want to go first or you want me to go? I'll go first. Okay, you go first, dude. All right. Um, I want to pick the Steelers again, but I can't jinx them. But I do like them at yeah. home getting points against the Browns. Um, but in a similar fashion... Same division. I like the Baltimore Ravens plus three and a half at Cincinnati. Um, Cincinnati is going to have a bounce back week, but three and a half points is a lot of points in the AFC yeah. North. And Baltimore looked good, and they, they had did. like a warm up game with with that terrible Texans team. Yeah, um, I'm going with the Titans again, plus three at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. I that's a good bet too. I like that one. I like the Titans, man. I like betting on them. They can cover spreads. I mean, they'll probably lose this game by two. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I I, th- I think Mike Vrabel just always keeps them close. You always know, keeps them in it. The most likely uh, loss differential is two in the NFL. So is that a true? No. Oh. It's three. It's one. It's seven. It's ten. Why are you gonna do that? I mean, hey, you know, uh, right in the middle of my picks. And uh, Kansas City Chiefs, they bounce back minus three at Jacksonville. I think that's a pretty Every, big Everybody's lock. dick is getting hard about, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're like the sexy team this year. Trevor yeah. Lawrence is, you know, they made a little bit of splash in the playoffs last year. I think the Chiefs kick their ass, especially if Kelsey comes back. I'm not even sure if he is, but, yeah. I mean, if, if they have any more help. I, I will say I'm really interested to see what the Chiefs do this week because – is it just an off week for their receivers, or is that offense nothing without Kelsey? Like, that's an interesting, uh, some, who is this team, you know? You get rid of Tyree Kill two years ago. Can they can they survive without They single-handedly without lost the game because of that Kadarius Tony. Yeah, I mean, six, seven dropped passes between the receivers. I mean, yeah. that's crazy. Um, Let's hear I your think picks. those are pretty good. My picks are, uh, I'm taking, I was wrong last week. I was wrong last week when I bet against Green Bay. I'll tell you this. Jordan Love does look good. Uh, and I thought the Bears were going to just mop the floor with them. And they got their crap pushed in. You know what I mean? So I'm taking uh, it is Green Bay minus one and a half versus Atlanta. Oh, I like Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, I'm taking Green Bay. Uh, I think they win that game by at least two. Okay. You know? That's well, do you know two points is the, the, the most, most common, common spread? Yeah, exactly. Spread differential, yeah. Totally made that up. And then I know I said this. I know I I never like to bet my own team, but I do like the Jets this weekend, uh, even without Aaron Rodgers, RIP. Um, but they're getting they're getting nine and a half points yeah, versus the Dallas. Cowboys. Yeah. And I, I will say the Cowboys just put 40 points up on, on, uh, on the Giants, which was sick. Uh, but like the Jets defense is too good. Yes. And I, do, I think the offense is also good. Uh, the offense is very good minus the quarterback situation now. So I, I think that that is a reactionary spread yes. to the Cowboys putting up so many points and, uh, I think the, the Jets losing Aaron Rodgers. I think week two 
is an is not an easy no week of gambling is easy. Yeah. But I think week two, you gotta find those spreads that are purely, like you said, reactionary yeah. or purely just these dudes like um overreacting. Overreactionary. Yeah. Like like come on, like the Cowboys aren't I mean that Jets defense is powerful. They're powerful, dude. And then my other one, I'm taking the same Jets Cowboys under 39 and a half. Oh. I mean the Cowboys and the Jets and the Niners are probably going to be the top 3 defenses in the league. So the the Cowboys offense is not great going against that and I don't think that the Jets offense yeah. you know they might struggle. I, even if it's I don't hate that bet. 14-17. I could see that being a score. You're all over that Jets game. I know. So I usually stay away from my teams, but I'm taking both those bets. So those are my three picks. That I would do a parlay if I were you. I would go Same Jets, guy. Jets money line oh. under parlay. Instead of the spread. Yeah, fuck it. Winston, you, you want one of your $10 to win, you know? Yeah, yeah. Probably like 10 to win 100. I had, a, I had a pretty good uh, Ten to win five leg parlay, same game between uh, last night's game. And uh, I hit... Two, I hit three out of five. Yeah. The only ones I missed was Garrett Wilson over 65 points, which if Aaron Rodgers was there, he probably would have hit. Uh, it was Garrett Wilson anytime touchdown. Uh, Jets money line, which I hit. Um, the point, uh, the yards for Garrett Wilson. A Dalvin Cook anytime touchdown, which I didn't hit. I took Stephon Diggs first to score. And he That's was first to pretty score. good. Nice. That was, I was thinking about taking that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I missed that by by two. But yeah, you're right. I got to stop parlaying. In my head, you know what it They're is? They're fun. I got to I go, "Hey, well, why would I bet $10 to make 10 when I could just why not win five bets in a row?" Well, that's why you bet $50 to win 50. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, odds are uh thank you for sponsoring the pod. Uh check it out. Uh link in our description below. 2 weeks free. Um check it out. It's fucking great. Yep, and and uh, next week we'll, we will um, we'll give you another one of those free value added yeah, years. Uh, yeah, so dude. if you load it up on that uh, Texas Alabama over, I mean, yeah, you want some money? So did I? Yeah, I did. Um, all right. Uh, oh, one. I have a question actually it related to betting, related okay. to gambling. Um, so we were out with a buddy, Paul Dags. You already mentioned him. I saw him on Saturday night, which is when we decided to. I was like, "Hey, you watching the game on Monday?" He's like. Yeah, you want to hang out? I was like, yeah. So he, every week, he was telling me, he puts together like some outrageous parlay. Like yeah. 17, 18 legs, and he bets $5. And he goes, they never they never hit. They've never hit. But one time I got like 14 out of 18. And my question was, because the, the, the payout is like not, it, for this past weekend, he didn't hit, obviously. Uh, but it was, Nine hundred and like ninety thousand dollars on a five dollar bet. Yeah, like some ridiculous, crazy, crazy bet. Yeah. And they do hit, just never. It's like winning the lottery, right? right? So I had a question. I was like, if you had, if you hit seventeen legs going into the eighteenth game, a five dollar bet, and they offer you a hundred thousand dollar payout, do you take that money or do you let it ride? For nine hundred and fifty, nine hundred and ninety thousand. I have a buddy who let it ride and lost. <sighs> something like that. Something pretty crazy like that. I, I think it was. I think he stood to win like a hundred thousand, and they offered him like thirty something. I don't know the exact, and he let it ride. I I'm in no position to let that ride. I know. Me neither. You know. I, I'd love to say. You know. I, I am a gambler. But that is something like, I'm fucking too broke. Yeah. That's a life-changing amount of money, you know? Uh, my buddy had a good answer. He was like, you you take the cash out. Or no, you you let it ride, but you also put like 100K. So like if I had if I had the Jets money line as my 18th leg. No, I understand what yeah. your buddy's saying, but I don't have 100K. Well, he said you can go to a guy and just like, like a bookie basically, and they'll give you 100 grand to like put on so you either win 900,000 or you win 100 uh 200,000. But you'd have to make a deal with that guy. Yeah, like 20%, 50%. Like I, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was just an interesting a thought that I was at we were having a conversation. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd probably cash it out, I'm a bitch. I'd probably cash it out too, but I almost like I almost wouldn't I'd almost be more upset if I cashed out and it hit than yeah. if I let it road and didn't cash out. That's a tough loss. You know? 
It's a bad fucking loss. I remember. The, I remember the worst like loss I ever took betting, and it's one that a lot of people feel this same pain. Yeah, was the Falcon Super Bowl. I bet oh, Falcons no. and fucking under. Oh. And 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 up to that point, it was the most I've ever bet on a game. I think I How put much? like six hundred dollars on the Falcons. Whoa! And it was money like I didn't have. Right? What was it set to pay out? It was six hundred dollars on the Falcons. It was six hundred to win. Oh, just straight up. Six hundred. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's like six sixty to win six hundred. Yeah. So, um, and this was back when I was betting through like a um, like a bookie who had an app. Yeah. And couple of my buddies at this party did the same and it's halftime and they're up all those points we're literally talking about planning a trip like we're planning a fucking trip oh, with our money i'm buddy. like dude this is huge there's no way like because the falcons were dogs like even if like the patriots somehow came back yeah yeah yeah. they still might not cover the spread yeah i did that and then the under two i had a little bit sprinkled on the yeah, under yeah, yeah. i think maybe like a hundred dollars sprinkled on the under not much and it just all came to both like, bats, and I had buddies that bet even more oh. on them than me. Uh, oh. This is when it, we, I was really stupid back then, and I was just fucking like sick to my stomach. I do like how they they keep playing those NFL commercials where it's like unbelievable happens. Make sure yeah. you don't bet what you can't afford. <laughs> it took me so many times to realize what that commercial was. It's I mean, crazy. I mean, that's literally my dad. Yeah, like like, like my grandfather. He was just telling a story uh, last time I last time literally the last time that i saw him uh because he's dead now but he uh was telling this story because he was a bookie he was a pretty prominent bookie really for yeah yeah i think i've talked a little bit about him on the podcast I, for like most of his life mm -hmm. and was like probably the second biggest bookie in pittsburgh like he called up money to like the Damn. guy like just above him and so like gambling's been a part of my entire fucking life like in the mm -hmm. summers i would sit at my grandfather's while he was betting over the phone on the horses on tv on like horse racing but he said my dad comes over it's a monday night football they're having people over and my grandfather's just per usual in the kitchen on the phones you know got all the betting sheets out my dad comes over and he's like he's like i want a hundred dollars on the Redskins. This was back when they were the Redskins, so I can say it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Skins, baby. So, so he bets on them, and then he starts drinking. He's like, you know what? I really like them. Bets a little more on them. Then this guy comes over and is wearing, like, a Redskin sweater. And my dad's like, it's an omen. It's an omen. And it's like, no, it's not an omen. It's a guy coming to watch a team wearing the sweater. <laughs> Watching He's his like, game. no, it's an omen. It's an omen that he came here. That means they're definitely going to do it more, more. And keeps putting more on. And then they, I, they lost like, oh. like took a piss pounding. Oh, yeah. My, I think all told, like my dad ended up having like a thousand dollars on them by the end of the night. Oh, and then your grandpa had to collect. Yeah, that's tough. That's off tough. his own son. Damn, and he had no qualms about doing it. No, I believe that, dude. Did what? you did you see the uh, the video uh, from uh, Monday night when it came out? The guy who bet he got one of those bonus bets for the Jets game. Yeah, put a thousand dollars, thousand dollar bonus bet. Aaron Rodgers over one and a half yards passing. Stop it. Thousand dollars to win eighty. Aaron Rodgers goes down in the first quarter. He's filming himself. He goes, "Guess I just lost a thousand dollars." Unreal. It's, it is the most sure thing of a bet that you could ever take in a game. That's how scary betting is, Dude, in my mind. There, there was a. Uh, I, I told I to, I had to have told the dream story on here about my dad with gambling. No, no. He um. So my my uncle Carmen tells him about this dream that he had okay. about Monday Night Football, where the Raiders dominated the team that they were playing. Yeah. And Monday Night Football happens, and the Raiders must have killed them. My dad was like, dude, fuck, he dreamed this. I don't know why I didn't bet it. So he started calling my uncle every week to ask him, hey, hey, come on, come on, do you happen to have a dream this weekend? No. And then finally, like, my uncle had to be like, dude, stop, fuck, stop. You got to leave me alone. I, I didn't have any more dreams. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> That's my, it? 
it, he had he had to like fucking my dad like would not quit bothering him. Oh my god! Every week was calling him to see if he had it. Dude, like I thought that there was going to be an end to that story where you were like, and then one time he had the dream and they lost. No, nope, just no. He had to have my dad get rid of him. Just addict behavior. My dad was extremely superstitious. <laughs> I stuff. believe it. Yeah, yeah. Like like said like like <laughs> there was wild. there was one time my uncle, um, the same uncle came over. And it's just me and my dad there. And I'm like a little, little like toddler yeah. and like could barely talk. And my dad was like, all right. It's when college basketball's on. He's like, Ray, blue or red, blue or red. And I'm like, blue. So my dad picks up the phone, makes a call. And he's like, all right, I want to put a, I want to put a nickel, just 500. I want to put a nickel on, on blue. And he gets off the phone and my uncle's like, hey, what the fuck? He's like, no, 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 no. The kid's been hot all day. <laughs> Talking about me, the kid's been hot all day, and then they, the, my uncle witnessed uh, one of my picks, so to speak, my picks as a yeah, little baby yeah, yeah. lose, and he was legit pissed at me. <laughs> he was like, ah, he was hot all day. I don't know what the fuck happened. He's hitting a whole cold streak. I don't know. Can't do it all day. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, dude, dude, that's like a dog betting when the dogs pick March Madness, and they're always like. They're always, by the time it goes viral, they're like eight for eight, and then everyone bets the ninth game, and then they're wrong. Yeah. I hate that, dude. The fucking, I was a little baby getting yeah. shit on about my picks. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, tell me that. What was the story you are going to tell earlier? Oh, I had a story. I don't, I don't know if I ever told this on the podcast about the uh, when I got my underage drinking in uh, high school. Did I ever tell that story? Uh, oh, is that with Mr. Uh, Mr. Booth? That that was the uh, that was the punishment. I don't know. If no, I don't think you ever told it. No. We um. Yeah. No. Uh, okay. So it was uh, it was a party, and I almost made it all the way out of high school without getting an underage drinking. Both of my siblings got theirs in high school. Yeah. And I almost made it senior year of high school. Fortunately, I was seventeen. Only one of my buddies here Family was eighteen. Family tradition. I know. And then I get the police come to the house because like with this one like really bad kid was there that I was friends with, but like he showed up, they must've followed him there somehow. And they come, they, they got a special team. So come, in, come in the house. I'm trying to leave. One kid got away. Okay. By just walking out of the door when the police came and he like silently like snuck out. He yeah, was real yeah. fucked up. Nobody ever caught him. One of my, but two of my buddies tried running one got away on foot for a while mm -hmm. and went to this like girl slumber party and was there like where his yeah. girlfriend was. And then her parents ended up ratting him out and the police came. Oh, you did tell me that. I yeah. did tell you that. You okay. told me that part. Yeah. But the, the craziest part of it was that night is, um, and, and I don't think I told this part is I was in the, the holding cell with like, you know, four of my good friends Yeah, and we're just like waiting for our parents to pick us up. Um, like one by one. And, I'm wondering why coming into the precinct is my mom, my brother, my brother's now wife, my sister all came. Okay. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Here's why. I texted my mom. She was too drunk to come and get me because she was out partying. <laughs> so she called my brother. My brother, also too drunk. To come and get me because he was out partying. So they got a hold of my sister. Yeah. She was buzzed up. Her now husband was just getting like off of work or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Or he was for some reason wasn't partying that Friday night. So he had to drive everybody <laughs> to the police station <laughs> to pick me up. And then I'm in the car and I'm like lying to my mom. I feel bad about this. She, yeah, she knows yeah. years later I was lying to her like yeah, I had like two beers. Oh, dude, she knew then. She didn't. No. No, because no, because course. years later she says something. We're all together. She's like, "Well, remember Ray when he got his underage? He was barely drunk." And my brother was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> uh, but it was just so funny. They all came to pick me up. Just that is hilarious, faced. dude. Yeah, I forgot if I told that story. No, um, I don't think you ever did. I might have told. I might have told some of it when I was just a, when I was just a lowly guest on here, dude. Yeah, nah, maybe. I mean, you told the story about your buddy getting rat out. I know, but you didn't tell that part. 
Um, yeah. Also, if you did, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. We got a lot of new listeners. Yeah, I know. Uh, dude, I had a dream the other night. I had a dream the other night that who I got won a, Monday Night Football. A Monday Night Football. The, uh, the Jets won. And yeah. It was actually. <laughs> do you know what's weird? Uh, the Super Bowl was played on the first week of the uh, NFL season and the Jets won. So. No shit. No, that wasn't. No. Um, but uh, the I had a dream like a couple weeks ago that I got arrested and um, I, it was like one of those, I was watching a lot of those YouTube videos where people are wrongfully arrested and then they file lawsuits and everything. And they're like, I know my rights. Yeah. Fuck off. You know, I got, I got down one of those rabbit holes. So I'm watching these videos. I go to bed. I have a dream that I get pulled over wrongfully arrested. And I just keep being like, you guys are making a big mistake, big mistake. And then they like started fucking beating the shit out of me. Jesus. Bring me to jail. And the entire time in my dream, I'm thinking, dude, this story is going to be so good on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so lame, dude? That's great. So lame. No, that's great. <laughs> yeah. But that was the, my whole thought was like, I'm about to make money on a lawsuit and I can't wait to tell this on the podcast. <laughs> And then I woke up and I was like, I do. This happens all the time when you wake up and you're like, not sure what was a dream or not for like oh, a couple minutes. That happens to me all the time, dude. All the time. So, yeah, I woke up and I was like, was I arrested? Do I have to go to jail? Like, do I have to go to court? Fuck. You felt that? Yeah. And then like, a, you know, a minute goes by and you're like, oh, no, no. Jesus you don't have that Christ. feeling? No. You know what, dude? I don't dream a lot. The alcohol. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting so fucking drunk. I don't Dude, I had I had a wild dream. I had a wild dream a couple uh, like two weeks ago where I was on a trip with my college buddies, and we were flying somewhere, and our plane crashed, and it like missed the runway and like crashed into the ocean, and yeah. we're like floating in the ocean, and the water is like filling up the plane, and we all start running to like try to get off, and before we're able to get off, the plane is able to take off again out of the ocean and then land like on the runway and all of us are like damn that was crazy i can't believe we we like there was water in the plane we almost died and then i woke up and i was like oh yeah we would have died straight up yeah it was nuts it's real yeah. captain captain sully we're gonna need to get a guest next week <laughs> We are spending this episode just talking about sports betting and dreams we've had. Hey, I think people like it. No, no, I, I people like, like it. it. Do I like? Yeah, listen, I talk. I could talk sports and gambling and uh, my dreams all day. Me too. But we do need a guest because that next week very exciting episode one hundred episode one one hundred. Episode 100, a big, Triple digits. Uh, big, I can stop writing 096, 097. Are you excited It'll about be that? 100, baby. Yeah, I'm very excited, dude. We've been doing this for a long time. I've been having a lot of fun doing this, man. We have a good Me time. Too, dude. We have a, we have a, we have a good uh, rapport. I think so, too. A lot of people make those comments also. We need to get in trouble together. I, I know. Maybe we not. drink quite a bit together. I know. But usually one of us is less drunk than the other. We have, we have yet to have a night where um, both of us are wasted. Don't remember what the fuck happened. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, we haven't had one of those together. Usually if I'm real messed up, you're like coming late or something and I'm just gone or the reverse. Coming late's what kills me, dude. Yeah. You're usually early. Well, like, like getting, when you get to the part, I, I get what you're talking about, my coming. Oh, hey when you get to the party and it's like. You want to catch up, and I still, I yeah. still fucking make that mistake a yeah. lot. Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, what's a drinking, what's a drinking mistake that you constantly make that you still haven't learned? Because I think that's one I of know. them for me. Yeah, what's one for you? Me, uh, drinking Maker's Mark like it's water. Yeah, on an empty stomach is always a mistake, and for some reason, I always think I'm like, oh yeah, I can have a fifth makers on the rocks and i haven't eaten yet and then i'll wake up the next morning i'll be like i'm not that drunk it's the only thing that it happens with is makers whiskey i have the same with jameson yeah and i'll just drink it uh white claws it never really happens with white claws or seltzers i'll drink like 12 of them and be sober and then like the 13th one you'll feel all 12 is that's my experience with uh that's seltzers. your white claw experience yeah you could drink like a bunch, like 10, and you're like, I still am barely drunk. The th and then 12, you're like, I feel all 10 of those right now. Two drinking lessons that I never learn mm. is the one I still try to play catch up. 
Yeah. I still get too excited about like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like when you get somewhere late and all your boys are having a great time and you're like, why am I not having a great time yet? I need to get drunk. Gotta catch up. Gotta and, catch up. And you just don't realize like, no, you can pace and you can end up having a really good night. But yeah. I never learned that lesson. And the other lesson, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, alluded to it, is like, as much as I have fun doing them, oh, I know shots are never a good idea. Yeah. I, I don't drink them anymore. Really? Other than last night at the bar that I watched the game at, someone brought shots over out, and she and they were like, Jets fans, free shots. And I had one. It tasted like shit. And then we bought so many drinks, our waitress came over and was like, you guys want a shot to end the night yes. on us? And I took them. I fucking love Ugh. shots. I love yeah. them so much, but it's something that like I just can't kills you. have. I mean, it's it's straight fucking booze to the it vein. Kills dude. you, dude. It's and and I could I could do so many of them. <laughs> and I love and I love the social aspect yeah, of it, dude. Yeah. I love the social aspect of everyone like, gathering let's around. Let's get a shot, let's get a shot. Two uh, whatever the fuck we're gonna say. Like, yeah. let's do a bit. Let's do this. And then you hurt. Oh, and you dude. black out. That's what I think they, they say a lot when people stop drinking. You, um, I think we're in the point of our uh, slight alcoholism uh, where we still romanticize and we remember the good times. They say when you stop drinking, you have to stop thinking about the things you'll miss and more thinking about how bad you feel the next day. My dad, yeah, who probably is dead because of his partying, still in like his last few months when I was talking to him on the phone when he couldn't drink anymore yeah. was still like, God, I miss drinking. He stopped drinking. Yeah, he had, I mean, he had to. Oh, when he was like... When he was real sick. sick yeah. But he, dude, he was still like, God, it was so fucking fun though. <laughs> drinking was so fun. And, he, and he's also often said phrases like, I don't know how people just go through life without doing drugs. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know how people go through life without doing yeah, drugs. Yeah, yeah. And it's true. Yeah. It's fun. Like, partying so fucking fun. I mean, you gotta... I'm not a, I'm not a drug guy, but I drink. I'm not a I drug do, guy, but uh, I mean you know, drinking, dude. A little nicotine. A little, a little zin. A little zin Zintastics, dude. But drinking, man. Abraham Zinkin, you know what I mean? I like that. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Drinking's just so fun. It's the best. Uh, what is your... We've talked about this, I'm sure, but what is your favorite setup for a drinking opportunity? It's a very broad question. You could pick really anything. What, what do you mean? Like your favorite type of like, uh, would you rather like the most excited you get about drinking? It could be a boys trip with your friends from college. It could be uh, a wedding, a daytime, nighttime. It could Ooh. be vacation on the like drinking in the airport, getting ready to go on vacation. This is a really good question, man. Yeah. I have a top three. Do you? A definitive top three. Give it to me. I think number three on this list of my favorite like times to drink mm -hmm. are NFL drinking. Like yeah. like tailgate drinking, like like or meeting at the bar to watch football. Like yeah. I love mixing beer and shots and football. Uh -huh. Any combination of that, it's the fucking best. Number two is I like like dive bar drinking yep. it's not too too much different but it's when you're drinking like beers and shots and you're just at specials specials mm -hmm. and you have like a crew that's there that are like you boys like yeah. it's a tight knit Real rag crew. tag group like 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 it's a it, you know there, there's not double digit people that you're with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like just a good crew that's getting fucked up playing yeah. goofing laughing Got the touch tunes on, yeah. you know, oh, maybe thrown around dude, some Dude, you love a touchdown. I love you a touch love tune. a touchdown. And then my ultimate number one favorite is drinking at the beach or by the... Ooh. Drinking by water. Okay, okay. Give me a we'll beach, say give a, me a pool. A lake drink is yeah. some of my favorite. A pool drink. Um, Same vibe. You know, I really enjoy... I love... I said this before, but I love a daytime wedding. Like yeah. a daytime wedding that goes into the night, you know? That's honorable mention for me. It, it that is one of my favorites. I I do kind of really enjoy I um a, like a, a a water drink. I don't love beach drinking, but I love like a pool, like a pool barbecue or like a like a backyard situation where you can get some beer games going, some drinking yeah. games. You know, as old as we are, but like a beer pong, beer dive, super fun. Um, but I think low key one of my favorite drinking times is 
is uh, at the airport getting ready to go on vacation. Really? Yeah. That might be like my favorite type of drinking. It sounds weird. Doesn't do it for me But at especially all. if you're with a good group of people, like either your family, some friends, you're getting ready for a trip. Everybody's excited, right? Everybody's amped up. And then you start drinking. You have a couple at the bar. Yeah, you know, and then you're getting on your flight. You have a couple on the plane, you know? Then you land and you're like already kind of buzzed and you're in paradise, wherever you're going, wherever that is, you know? Alaska or Miami or Aruba, like you're ready to go. You know what I like? Yeah. A nice little sneak off drink. Like mm. like when you break you away mean? from the crew, like, uh, okay, I'll give you a scenario. You're at a wedding, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe like, you know, a bunch of people are hanging out and uh, nah, maybe a wedding's oh, not like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, I know what or, you're going to say. Maybe, you know, how about this? You go on, like you get to a party early and you know you're like ah like we got to run and go uh get some six packs and you go to get six packs with one other person and you do a shot at the bar yes i do like that secret shots i I do like that my uncle used to do that but with pizza he would always pick up pizza for the family and he'd have a little secret slice at the pizzeria see i like that you know i like a little i like a little i i used to have a little i used to have a little song i would sing when i do secret shots can you sing it yeah do it it would okay. So 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 here's the scenario. I'm so excited. Dude. Me and you were at a little party, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we're like, dude, we're fucking running out of beer. And there was a certain time where I would drive, not anymore, not me anymore, and you dude. Would walk over to the bar to grab yeah. six packs. We go there, be like, yeah, want do a little shot? Absolutely. And then I would go, secret shots, secret shots. Nobody knows. Secret <laughs> shots, secret shots, shots between bros. That's so good, dude. Pretty good. I love that. Secret shots, secret shots. Oh my god, I'm gonna I start lo- doing that. I love a sneak away thing, man. Oh yeah. Or, or like, or like a pregame quick thing. Oh yeah. Like, okay, me, me and Natalie before my grandfather's funeral. Ooh. We were running early. Yeah. We stopped at a Primani Brothers, a Pittsburgh staple, mm-hmm. on the way there, and we had, uh, we had big beers. This is this is a weird one. Um, a funeral. A funeral drink. Love drinking at a funeral. It's kind of great. It's not something you look forward to because it means that someone died. Hopefully, it's not someone super close to you. But, like, you go to a funeral of someone who's, like, not super close to you or, like, someone who's, like, a, you know, a friend of a family member that was super old and it's not tragic. It's always sad. But yeah. you go to those funerals, you know, when it's like, oh, yeah, you know, they, they lived a super long life and, you know, thanks for being here. And those... Everybody's like hanging out. Nobody misses a funeral, right? Yeah. It's not like, uh, oh, we're having a, you know, we're having a birthday party. Uh, come on through. Tons of people are going to miss that. No one's missing a few. So you get all these people you haven't seen in a long time. You get booze in a little bit. I've gotten pretty drunk at some funerals. Oh, I got wasted at my dad's funeral last year. Yeah. There was literally like. Well, that also, to be honest, makes sense though. Well, th- well, there, like, well, who yeah. he was for sure. Well, no, but also it's like, you know, when it's someone very close to you. I can understand getting real tuned up. We were there were certain people that we were going outside with that just had flasks, Ooh. and then to the point where we were straight up tailgate style <laughs> at my dad's buddy Hooves truck, just drinking beer ah. outside, just like chugging beers, like in the cold. It was fucking November in Pittsburgh, yeah. freezing cold, just hammering beers. Your dad would have loved that. He, I mean, that's what he would have wanted. Yeah, that's absolutely. Fun. Dude, we should go to a Hooters. Dude, I would love to. We should go to a Hooters and watch the games. Is there one awesome. in New York? I, there's got to be. Like Times there Square is, or something? There is one in New York. I know where it is. Where? It's, it's, I think it's by a Hofbra house. Dude, it's, okay. Uh, if you guys Midtown. are listening, you live in New York. Next Sunday. If you're listening on Wednesday, this Sunday, are you around? This Sunday? Yeah. I could do this Sunday at Hooters. We're going. If you guys want to hang with the Troublemakers... Come on over to the, the only Hooters in Manhattan. Let me let me just make sure. Vamp <laughs> a little is, bit. Is let me Hooters? just make sure that there is a Hooters in New York Check City. Check if there's a Hooters. Because you know what? One of my favorite things to do is uh, I like getting Hooters shirts when I travel. Um, I have uh, I have a, a couple. I have one from Aruba. I have one from Hawaii. Dude, there's a Hooters in Queens. No. Is there? I think so. Where in Queens? Damn it. It's got to be wicked far. Yeah, it's like Deep Queens, almost Forget. Suffolk County. It's in Fresh Meadows, Nassau place. County. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we, we could go to that one. We though. Ain't go to that one. Fresh Meadow. No, 
That'll be a fun one, though. Hooters. Because that'll be, you know what's better than a Hooters in the city? A Suburban Hooters. Really? Yeah. There used to be one by me when I was a kid. I knew you I told, told me you, about yeah. it. I talked a lot about how it. How your My, dad used to bring Paul you. was a big fan, man. That's oh, yeah, dude. We should go and watch the games there. Also, a uh, uh, Suburban Hooters is going to be less expensive than a Midtown Hooters. Hooters of Manhattan. Yeah, I bet it's Times Square. <sighs> no? Times Square is going to be outrageous. We do. Um, there's a buddy, a buddy of ours, mutual friend Jack Burke, who former guest of the pod, two-time guest of the pod, who uh, his, his family has a running bit with him. Uh, I think he told this on the pod, so I don't feel bad telling it, um, where every time he has a new niece or nephew... He always takes their first picture with his sister or, you know, one of his siblings yeah. will buy him a different Hooters shirt. And he takes the first picture with the baby that's, in a that's Hooters funny. shirt. Right? Like Isn't that, that a hilarious yeah. bit? Like when those kids are older, he'll just have like every first photo with the baby is him in a different Hooters shirt. That's dope. It's great. Yeah. It's so funny. You have a Hooters shirt. Yeah, I got an Aruba one. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know what is weird? Um, going into a Hooters and just buying the shirt. No, you got to sit down and have a beer, dude. What are you doing? I didn't. We went to dinner. We went to dinner when we were in Aruba, and then there was a Hooters across the street, and I was like, hey, hang on. I got to jump in there real quick, and my family waited for me as I bought a shirt in Hooters. Nothing better than, like, a Florida Hooters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's where it originated, Tampa, maybe. Uh, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. We should go. We're going this weekend. Let's go to Hooters. Sunday. Uh, take a guess. It'll either be in Manhattan. Here's the thing, yeah. Or Fresh Meadow. Hey, worst case scenario, you just go to Hooters. Yeah, worst case, you're at Hooters. Best case, you see us at Hooters. Oh, I'm excited. That would be so fun, dude. It'd be fun. Let's do it. I'm in. Watch the games, 1 o'clock game. 1 o'clock games at Hooters. Jets play at 4. So we Steelers watch the 1 o'clock. Monday, Steelers play Monday night, so I don't even. Yeah, 1 o'clock game, 4 o'clock game. Perfect, dude. Let's fucking do it. Uh, we're at just under an hour. You wanna, Do you have Let's anything else? Let's get the else? fuck out of here. Yeah, you want to get out of here? This has been fun, man. This has been great, dude. A little trifecta of just Dylan yeah, and three. Ray leading up to our hundredth episode. Yeah, our hundredth yeah. episode. Who it's going to be? Hopefully, do. one of two guests. We won't tell you who. That's but true. Hopefully, uh, it'll be a good one. I think it will be a good one either way. It's but always a good yeah, one. Dude. Always a good one. It's troublemakers. Troublemakers. Five star rating and review. Like I fucking said every week, you can find me online. I'm at Ray Zawadney on all social media. Um, I will be posting uh, some stand up dates soon. I got some stuff coming up this Saturday, actually. I will be in Jersey. More details on that to come. Um, New York Comedy Club in Stamford on September 26th. Baby. Uh, uh, Grizzly Pear this, this Friday. Oh, look at you. Two yeah. shows, eight and eight and ten fuck yeah dude and at dylan krasinski on instagram youtube tiktok at troublemakers on all those sites we post clips three four five six times a week sometimes uh go follow us there episodes are out every wednesday also check out our sponsors true classics uh and odds are uh we appreciate them helping us out on the pod so go check out uh if you want to show some appreciation uh go check out their stuff both great products so bye we'll see you next week baby good night <laughs>